Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Richest Men in Town podcast. I'm Mike Freeman, and along with my good friend and co-host, Tyler Gould, we're excited to welcome you to our little podcast project. Tyler and I are just a couple of middle-aged husbands and dads driven to live our best lives. We want to be better every day, so here we'll be sitting down with great people, not famous people, but great people that we admire, to learn their secret to living the rich life. Probably not the rich life you're thinking of. Our guests come in humbled and surprised at the invitation and hopefully leave feeling proud and grateful, realizing just how good they really have it. So pull up a chair, stay a while, and raise a glass with us as we toast our guests to the richest men in town. Mike Freeman, another episode of Richest Men in the Town is in the books. Hey, happy year, Mark. Happy brother. year, Mark, man. One year, uh, Richest Men in Town podcast has been in existence for one year. For one year. So <laughs> to celebrate our one year mark, we uh, we tracked back to episode 29 of the Richest Men in Town and brought back our good friend Dave Voigtlander uh, to, to spend some time with us. Dave, you know, Dave had a compelling story when he was with us uh, in episode 29. And we had a lot of people who reached out and, 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 uh, shared some of their experiences based on what Dave shared with us. And, and, uh, so we bring them back and Dave's gone through some stuff since our last, uh, our last meeting, some, some big life changes with, with work and some other things. And so we got a chance to sit and, and talk about what Dave's been learning through, through all of this. Uh, what, what stood out to you, Mike, with our time with Dave Voigtlander today? Well, I, I think really importantly that bring back's important. Right. I mean, I hope that our listeners understand that these are people that we have relationships with. And, uh, you know, uh, honestly, the richest man in town is a spotlight moment. And we're talking to people about where they're at in their life at that moment. Yeah. But we, we know life is a river. Right. I mean, there's 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 ups and there's downs. And, um, you know, in in our in our follow-up contacts with uh, with Dave, he let us in on some on some life quake moments, right? Those things that, you know, we talk about core values and being stripped down to like who you are. Life gives you those moments, uh, you know, those roll call moments. Like, hey, Dave Voigtlander, what are you about? And he responds, right? He get he, uh, I think he would even acknowledge that he got hit to the canvas. Right. Yeah, absolutely. This latest blow knocked him down for a spell, but but he's back and he's better. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's hard to imagine, right? Dave Voigtlander is better, but he yeah, is, you know. And it's funny because we 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 obviously our our listeners of our show know that we end each episode with the same question. We asked Dave that same question tonight, and he he answered that question. He said, you know, not a lot of things have changed in that answer, but a lot of things have been solidified in that answer. depth and commitment to what yeah. I'm about to say. Like, yeah, yeah, I know I said this in November, but guys it's deeper. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's deeper. You know, and the thing is like, he had this, he had these events and it disrupted him, but he started to realize that he had put limitations on himself. Yeah. I, I love that. He said the set, this setback, set up my comeback. (laughs) I love that, man. That's that slingshot, right? You got to pull it back to go forward. And sometimes life pulls us back and then it's just really a launching point or a pivot. Yeah. Right. And, and, and Dave would not have written what his life is looking like right now. Right. Right. If you would have gone to him in November and said, Hey, and the funny thing is, is in November on the way he answers that, that final question, he said, it's not about the job. Yeah. You know yeah. what, Dave? Life will give you a chance to prove that. <laughs> right. Do you believe that? But and I think that's what's interesting, and maybe maybe this is one of the things we we can all learn from Dave, right? Is that you know I don't think that if you would have asked the young Dave Voigtlander, uh, you know, pre pre marriage and and all this other stuff, what his life was going to look like, if he would have been able to script it out like it is right now but he talks about the lessons learned and the ability to remember experiences that, that impacted and influenced. And, you know, you talk Mike about 
this being a, a river, you know, and being in the current. And Dave's had some of those uh, those those rough edges knocked off by by being in that current, and he yeah, but, he's and strong he, for it. You're always talking about the importance of remembering, right? And but he shows us, mm -hmm. hey, look, I got through this because when it hit, I went through this initial grieving, and then it was like, okay. This is not the worst thing that's ever happened to you. Remember this and this and this. Yeah, yeah. Right? And the the strength that you develop to get through those things will help you get through this. Yeah. And that's the power, right? That's the power of that's the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the power of that reflection and that's the power of you know like okay, I'm going to use this to go redefine myself we talked about that identity and right and how everyone's like oh mike he's the guy that works for this and tyler oh this is what yeah. he does like no what i do is a husband yeah what i do is a dad <laughs> this other the way i make a buck that's not my identity right right you know yeah i love to the i love to the scale and scope of his impact now right he talked about being part of this big thing and he thought he was influential or had impact. And now he's on a much smaller scale, but he says to us, man, the impact and influence that I'm having right now is huge compared yeah. to when I was a cog in a machine. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, there's great lessons in that. You know, he talks about the comeback. He talks about knowing your purpose, your identity, removing roadblocks and that that we put in front of ourselves right we create those roadblocks we're the limits yeah we're the limits <laughs> i mean it, it was it was a fun time i mean look we had a blast catching up with dave um i hope our listeners learn and, and take the opportunity to learn from from dave again today we've uh you know it, it was lessons were taught fun was had and but i love uh, i love too his spirit of just graciousness because he acknowledges yeah. that like this is his perception of his reality he's not making light of what other people are going through right but that call to move forward right if you're in something if you're going through something moving forward will get yeah. you to your next thing that's right what do you say you just sometimes maybe it's just getting out of bed and going for a walk and or making breakfast and yeah go for a walk and you, you run into somebody you have a conversation and that gets you thinking about the next thing yeah it, so it, I, he, he said it's not going to come to you as you lay in bed yeah that's right <laughs> although i i sure wouldn't mind a couple of those right where i just lay in bed and there it is but uh but you no know, it was it was a blast tonight i appreciate it mike it was fun to, to hang out with you and dave again and uh let's see what this next year of RMIT brings. Uh, can't so, wait. Can't, can't wait. wait. So sit back and enjoy your time with Dave Voigtlander on the richest men in town. Yeah. And we sat, uh, we sat around and ate now and later brought, I brought the biggest Winco bag of now and later you've ever seen bulk, right? I went to the bulk. Are they all individuals in a bag or are they the, oh, yeah, five yeah, packs? Yeah. the individual? The individual wrapped and I loaded up like 10 pounds and I'm walking through Winco with 10 pounds of now and laters. Ooh, and, I, uh, you know, the idea being that God's in your life now. You won't see it now. Right. You'll see it later, but things are happening. Like he's making some things happen right now that yeah. uh, that are going to out of out of small things. Right. Versus yeah. Yeah. That, which is great. That's I, I like it, man. Yeah. yeah, I would not be a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints without an incident that involved a third grade kid getting punched in the tetherball line. I mean, you know, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of physical altercations in, te in tetherball lines over the years, you know? Yeah, and for yeah, good yeah. reason. For good I reason. Was, I was crushing on this girl. Yeah. In third grade named Tracy. OK. He knows who she is. <laughs> and uh you know i'm on the bus on a monday with a pocket full of milk money and a girl comes on the bus with a flower and i'm like i'll give you my milk money for that flower okay she's like done so i buy the flower i get into uh mr sanford's class shout out to mr sanford probably not no longer with us um 
opened up Tracy's desk and put the flower in. Wow, you're a player, dude. Closed, yeah. And then like like ninja like I closed the desk, right? Yeah. And I go out and I do my thing. Well, at lunch, uh, I noticed Tracy's given some uh pretty extra attention to a guy named Johnny. Johnny's Johnny, always trouble, man. Johnny was my arch nemesis rival, right? Yeah. Isn't the bad guy in Karate Kid named Johnny? If you're asking that question, you just didn't go to it immediately. Yes, that's Johnny. Right. Johnny, Johnny. man. Seriously. <laughs> so it turns out Johnny took credit for the flower, bro. Mm. I like Johnny's game, too. That's a power game right there as well. Man. <laughs> Anonymous flower. She says, hey, I got a flower. You say, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a good move. Opportunistic <laughs> devil yeah. Johnny is. Well, uh, well, Dave, my friend Dave, that's not that's not right. So we got to regulate. <laughs> so <laughs> regulators mount up and head to the tetherball line, and Johnny gets uh, gut punched by you or Dave. Dave, yeah. In the Dave's line, you were you just kind of standing back, like, yeah, that's right, son. I got people, <laughs> right? I got people, and uh, from that minute forward, right, blood brothers, and turns out. Dave falls in love with a Mormon girl and joins the church and comes to me and says, Hey, you want to learn more? And I was like, not really. <laughs> <laughs> but years later. Yeah. Now and later, man. It all comes later. together, man. It all comes together. It all comes together and leads to temples and eternal family. It's wild. wild. Yeah, it's good stuff, man. Five conversations. I'm a member of the church because of five conversations, a million little things. And a right. million things that a little things that I did to do the work. Yeah, yeah. Right? But yeah. Prompted to do the work by literally five conversations. I you know that might have taken 20 minutes total, like action time, like game time. Yeah. Right? I, at some point, we need to go through these five conversations and figure out and break them down, man. You know what I mean? I Seriously. think that yeah, it's interesting, man. But that, but, but your point is, is good. I think that, you know, we have, uh, it's these small interactions that, that really have the potential to make up the biggest, uh, make the biggest impact on us, you know, especially if they're, if people are being, uh, like you can think of conversations where people have been real and they just lay it out for you. There's no beating around the bush. There's no fluff to it. It's just like, here it is. And that's like, you know, you walk away from those going, mm, I got to. Yeah, and how many, how around. many of our guests, how many of our guests, have, when, when, when we ask them about hinge moments, those are the kind of conversations that make up hinge moments. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we got one, a, a, a five minute phone call from a daughter, right. For, uh, for, for Dick Moody, we've got all, all kinds of stuff like that happen. Hey, by but the way, he, speaking of, speaking of Dick yeah. Moody, right. Throw down some 17 bucks, right. Oh, for sure. Operation troop support. We're doing a little thing, throwing it out there, just inviting folks from the town, folks from anybody, anywhere, support our troops, throw down a buck 70, throw down 1700 bucks, whatever you want to throw down, but uh, help out Dick's group. And, and uh, it's just kind of cool. Pulled out pocket and 10 and seven one staring me in the face. Like, that's weird. That was great, man. Uh, 17 bucks. That's the average postage for a care package from Dick's group. So, yeah. No, that's a, it's a cause, man. That's worth, worth doing. And, and, you know, if you haven't had a chance to listen to Dick Moody and hear his story and his passion for that is, uh, it's contagious, man. It's really cool. So is his accent. <laughs> I love it, man. I love, I it. love it. Hey, yeah. one year, brother. Can you believe that? I, I didn't, I couldn't let believe that. that. Let yeah. that sit on you for a second. One year we've been doing this. One year. Well, one year we've been doing it where the public know about it, right? I mean, yeah, we started back maybe March of of twenty, maybe, but yeah, one yeah, year since our launch. Yeah, and probably ten plus years of having these conversations uh, without a mic in the, front of yeah, us. Yeah, and that's what's so cool right. is like you know today's guests we're bringing we're bringing someone back to get an update, and from time to time we we do that and. Uh, Dave Voigtlander, I don't know. I, I, I think Dave Voigtlander lit up both of our phones, right? After people had an opportunity yeah. to listen to him in episode 29, people reached out and was like, 
you know, if you remember, remember, uh, that was just by circumstance, we just happened to stumble on a couple of stories uh, involving adoption and turned out to be National Adoption Month back in November. And, and uh, people really, the things that Dave shared really resonated with a lot of our listeners. Yeah. Uh, and I'm excited to, I'm excited to have an opportunity to catch up with him and see what life is what life is teaching the Voigtlanders these days. Well, he's just on the other side of that door, man. Let's uh, let's let him in. Dave, What's welcome happening? to the richest men in town. Round two. How are you, brother? Round two. I love it. I'm great. Uh, top of the morning to you guys. I'm awesome. Thank you. Good to, good to see you, man. It's good to see you. I'm, I think I'm about uh, nine weeks past due. I promise to call you. So my bad. Well, that's all right. I, it, it, <laughs> I, at 12 weeks, I start to worry. But, you know, so you're still yeah, yeah, and, you know, If I probably look at the calendar, we might be pushing 12. So my fault. <laughs> Hey, so Dave, seriously, uh, our listeners aren't going to be able to do this, so we might need to cut this out. But is that a virtual background? Because you couldn't pick a more Portland scene than what you've got behind you. It's this like is a not, loft this, or something. So, so this one, no, this is this is legit. Um, it is a um, like a brick wallpaper, so it's like a faux brick. I uh, gotcha. gotcha. Um, I've done that through the house and some things during the pandemic. I I have a little bit of a. A visual and maybe a, I guess a, like a interior design like thing in me. It's weird, but no. Then everything else is is just because this was my home office. So this is obviously back to a former employer, and I have, I mean, I believe I just we just liked it, and I liked it. And I don't really office out of here anymore, but it looks um, good, no. Man. We I created. Like it, I am I in like the garage. It. I'm in the exact same place we spoke last time. Um, I probably had a filter last time because I didn't have this set up. But no, this is it's next legit. to me. So, Next to me here is the lawnmower and an elliptical. <laughs> and here, right here is the water heater. Like, don't, don't fool. This is, I'm in the middle of the. Man, you, you, I, would, you would never know, man. You'd yeah. never know. Well, That's you're looking good, good man. man. You're looking good. How's Oregon treating you? How's Oregon treating us? Well, we're tired of, of, of all the fun restrictions and stuff that COVID life is bringing, especially in, I, I guess, all the states we were kind of in um no but i think oh, you're getting good. it i think you're getting it a little extra up there a little a little bit and again whatever side of the fence that's not that that's not the the thing just it, there's right. obviously everyone's pent up and ready to, to move on to back to life i guess you would say or some phases of it and so slowly getting there but i mean other than that all's all's good we have you know good some good friends we've enjoyed being home with uh home, you know church and and all that fun stuff we're still doing that in oregon <laughs> so uh wow. done some camping we have got out in a little bit so for the most part it's been it's been good good wife kids everybody's good everybody's healthy everyone's healthy we had a little uh cold maybe minor flu bug go around but i'm the only one who didn't catch it my wife's still kind of dealing with it. And it's because, again, I'm, I'm not working from home anymore. So I'm not around the family as much. Yeah. <laughs> and getting all the germs passed to me. So I, I've lucked out a little bit. But for the most part, yeah, we're healthy. We've had birthdays and added a puppy and a lot of different things since we last spoke. So um, good times. Man. That's a, that's a, that's a list. So I think, so tell me what, <laughs> you're, what, what are you, what are you doing now? What's the, what's the new gig? Yeah. So I, I have two gigs that have kind of popped up, which is kind of, kind of been interesting. So um, I, I don't know how, how far to, to go back or how, how deep to go back. So I'll let you guys decide where you want well, to go. With something. So really quick, we want me, deep Dave. So yeah, we're talking, we left you, <laughs> we left you episode 29 uh, yeah. captivating stories, Dave. I was telling you, I was talking to Tyler before, before you jumped in. Uh, that particular episode kind of lit up my phone. Um, a lot of people moved by the things that uh, that you shared, and just um, <clears throat> the Voigtlander story is an amazing story. Uh, you, we left. You were um, you had recently left San Diego with a company and moved up to the the Great Northwest, right? Yes. So yep. so pick it up from there. Yeah. So when when we last spoke, you know, we're we're at the end of the end of the year um the company i was with had like rolling layoffs happening and and because i'm in a an hr function town acquisition or recruiting just recruiting is probably what most people under know it by um 
in this, in my former company, it tends to go last in the cycle, but there was this kind of odd um, insecurity everyone around felt because they were very transparent and maybe that had some negative things to it saying, hey, this is happening. Here's how many people are probably going to be impacted. And this was starting like last, almost around this time. So you kind of knew the cadence of like a second week was a certain job level. Another couple of weeks later was another job level within each little part of the org. And so kind of knew that the HR function they had told us, like it's your, your converse, you, you'll, you'll know what's going to happen in January. I've had some sinking feelings kind of, or, or just some thoughts, like my time was going to come where I was going to have that, that conversation uh, that someone would have with me. No reason to, not based on performance or anything, just, just a nagging feeling. Um, and it led me to, to, to start doing some dabbling and doing some side gig stuff and, and mainly you know, long, long story short on that part for now is um, I started selling on platforms like Amazon and different places. And, and honestly, I was, it was just about fun. It was about keeping my mind engaged in like business and different things, things I like. Um, yeah, I was making like five or 800 bucks a month, nothing crazy, but I was doing it for kind of not doing a whole, a whole lot of stuff, shopping or reselling and doing things. So I was enjoying it. And so uh, mid-January, got the email at six o'clock in the morning, you know, for a conversation at 11 and was the VP of HR. So I pretty much knew where that was headed. I've never been laid off before, but this felt like exactly what people told me happened. So 11 o'clock, I got the phone call. I remember everything really vividly about it. But what I think, you know, it was a quick conversation. I kind of allowed it to be quick. Um, I've had to do conversations like that in my career. And so I kind of could see both sides of the fence, but I've never sat on this side. Um, and I, I was told, you know, it's one of those things like a breakup. It's not you, it's us. It's not your performance. It's the work is changing. And I, I don't disagree that that stuff can't happen in big organizations, but it's still after you give, I guess you would say that that 11 years to a company, we moved to Oregon for this company. Um, you get associated with that company. Oh, it's David. He works for blank. You know, he's the blank guy or, you know, whatever. So you, 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 you always, I don't know. I don't know if that's an everybody thing. I don't know if it's a me thing, a guy thing, what, but you kind of get associated with your job and like tied into your identity, right? Yeah. Like a little bit of that's your identity. And, and so I just remember that it bled, the phone call be 10 minutes. Immediately went in some, the, to Carissa and fell into her arms and was crying and kind of letting it all out. And um, that we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll get through this. Um, I immediately went to like my email because I was working on multiple. I wanted to get touch base with the, with the hiring managers. I, I just felt like that was the right thing. Like, hey, I'm kind of leaving you high and dry. Sorry, but, you know, it didn't take long. My access was already stripped of everything. So I'm calling some of them saying, hey, I'm, I've been exited. But I want to let you know I've already contacted somebody who I know is going to be your recruiter for this job or that, you know, and, and um, just what I felt was, was the right thing. You know, even though I was in a really weird, situ a tough situation, I was like, I, I don't think others have to be pulled into my tough situation a little bit. Hmm. So yeah, I was, was expecting it in a weird way, felt it for months, maybe brewing and coming, but until I guess the day it hits, um, man, you just never, 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 never thought it would happen in my life or career, but it happened. And um I don't have any fancy quote for any it, so to speak, but I, I, you know, the, the setback has definitely set up my comeback. And so it's, it's been a very positive, it's been a positive moment <laughs> and, and we can talk about some of that stuff, but um, yeah, I mean, I have some real emotions about it. I've always been, I think, very vocal with things and, and drama and stress, um, whether it was things I've shared last time, but I allowed and my family allowed and my wife allowed me to really just take the time I needed to get through it. And for me, that was probably like a month of, I wasn't in bed laying around moping. I was enjoying the freedom to some degree. Um, everyone was already home and, and stuff, but just not having to be, I guess, tied to a laptop, tied to conference calls and tied to everything and just being able to be a little more present was really nice. Um, and not really have to look for a job for a little bit because we were fine and the money wasn't, finances weren't so much an issue, so to speak. And I got a severance and blah, blah, blah. So 
everything felt still secure that it allowed me, I guess, the necessary time to career grieve <laughs> a little bit. Right. And again, really put me in that place of like, okay, this place did not, it doesn't define me. And I sure I'm, I definitely let it. Um, so I think that it only took me a month roughly of decompressing from it all and curbing it all um, was good, but maybe it's because I had nothing else on my plate and I could just kind of absorb it and talk with people and, um, you know, seek guidance and uh, prayer and, and everything that kind of goes with that process. And so, um, yeah, and I guess in my life, I think of all, it's not the worst thing I've ever faced in life between divorce and deaths and um, again, talk about losing Lily and so many different things. And I've, I've dealt with way worse things that I'll, we'll get through this. Like, it'll be okay. So. Well, uh, we're, we're glad you're here to talk. And, and I, I just, I'm, <laughs> I'm, cur- I'm curious, Dave, because I, you know, you talk about your job being, you know, part of your identity. And I think as you're, as you're talking, I mean, I can relate to that, you know, and I think everybody well, yeah, someone will come to you I, or think of you or if, if we, you know, move into the, the ward, people instantly say, here's the people who can sell you a house. Right, right. Yeah. It even right. happens when I moved to Portland. Like, again, like it, we associate people with their jobs. Yeah. Too, yeah. You know? So what, what was that like? Just sort of detaching from that and uh, and and I guess I guess reassessing what identity is. Yeah, I think what was a little challenging with it at the, the very first when I got the, the phone call and the, that month or so after is my former company really had a core brain, some core ethos and kind of, uh, you know, of course, mission statement stuff, but really some brand ethos and, and almost what we call brand truths. And they, they just really coincide with how I am, period. You know, mm-hmm. one was just, quote, do the right thing. You know, one's about honesty, integrity, and trust and empowerment. And so the beliefs of the company really tied in well to who I am. So there was that, that I was like, okay, yeah, the company may put that on paper and, and hopefully try to show it, but you know, I'm always going to still be those things. And so there was a part of me that said, I can still do what they believed in, but I just don't have to be associated with a color or a box or a logo or anything anymore. So I think it was just separating some of that of going, you know, I'm, Am I a little angry? Yeah, it was, but also I had 11 amazing years and 11, 11 years of great people that I, I allowed myself maybe to some degree to self-identify that way. It's okay, maybe if others do, but um, I, don't, I don't need to be, I don't I guess I just don't need to be a be, I'm only that person to people and, I, and hopefully change it. I, I mean, in the end of the day, it probably started me to ask people less often what do you do for work or what do you do? Because I started mm-hmm. to realize that probably gets, it would have got asked for me a lot. And I would be very proud of the company I worked for and very proud of what I did. And so it was easy to spout it off. Um, and now, and just realizing that that person has more than where their paycheck's coming from. So um, it, it, like I said, maybe something for anybody or everybody to, to, Hey, what do you do for work? Is it maybe, maybe it's good not it to be the first or second or third or, 10th question we ask somebody all the time but as you're saying that i'm like oh my gosh dude it's such a look i mean it's sort of the how are you question right yeah it's that we let's just see if we can crack the door open and start a conversation and we'll start there and then and 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 maybe we can end up somewhere deeper Uh, you know it's funny though mike we had this conversation the other day with porsche and chad right and we talked about core uh, what's your, what's your core identities? Like what, yeah. what makes you, and you know, there's, there's a lot of things that I had to really think about that, by the way, to like dig down to a, to the, to a core level, because there's all these things that on, that are surface level that I think make me who I am. And then the, the interesting thing is I asked my kids, right? What, what's, what's our core, what are our core values as a group? Like, what mm. is that? And I got their feedback, which uh, was surprisingly <laughs> was surprisingly good. Okay, good. <laughs> so, yeah, but but it's interesting though because you know I think sometimes we start a conversation with those surface level, that surface level question, "What do you do for work?" But but at the same time, we identify ourselves, maybe at least me, yeah, sometimes yeah. with with those surface level things too, yeah, and not not necessarily 
you know, what, what's at the, what's in the middle of it? What's, what makes me who I am. So I, I love that idea. I mean, obviously the process is difficult getting it, yeah. there, <laughs> going through what you, what you've gone through. Well, it's like it, you know, the, it, I think Porsche even said, st- strip it away, right? Yeah. You strip yeah. away le- like the layers. I was on a call the other day and someone said, uh, so uh, what, what's, what's your position? What's your title? And I was like, dad. And you yeah. should have seen the look on their face it was like, yeah. oh, oh yeah, I guess that's, that's important. Like, yeah. Yeah, you're you know, right. Like, yeah. And in the spirit of this, in the spirit of the, the folks that we talked to through this podcast project, I mean, I think that how cool would it be if that's how, that, that's how we answer it. Yeah. What do you do? Oh, I'm, I'm Kelly's husband. Yeah. Right? yeah. Like, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm Abe's dad. <laughs> like that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Versus, versus our, an, an organization because you're not your job. Yep. You know, yes, we spend a lot of time in work and we, we, we do those things because we have responsibilities, but in the end, I think of all those hospice nurse conversations, right? Like no one says, dang it. I wish I would have worked for company X longer. Yeah, okay. it's well, true. It, yeah. It's, it's sort of like, you know, I, I had this, this, I had, you know, the same sort of thought I transitioned to a, to a different job. And, and I've, you know, I wrestled with that thinking about, Oh, should I do this? You know, what's, is the timing okay? And you have all of these questions that go through your, your mind. And I was just thinking about it. You know, I was like really spending time going through the process and, and I had this sort of epiphany, you know, and it was basically like, you know, what are, what are your priorities? Like, that was a thought that I had, like, what's important to you. And at the end of the day, you know, like Mike said, it, my answers were, you know, faith, family, and really, that was it. Everything else, you know, it'll, that's it, fine. But those are the two things that I really cared about. And then the thought, the immediate next thought that I had about that transition was, it doesn't matter. Like, that was the literal thought. Like, it just doesn't matter what, what your title is or what your, you know, if, if your priorities are those things and, and the thing that, that title that you have is a means to be involved in those things and, doesn't matter right you yeah could be the, you could be the garbage collector you could be the you could be the president or ceo of a company or whatever else but i think that the end. scary thing is though when it is tied to your identity it is the it's it's those glasses you put on every day mm-hmm. it's and how you it, see yeah. it's how you see the world it is right? and like like i said i mean look tra- that's what i think that was for me and i want to get dave's input on this but that, for me that was why the wrestle was so hard right because i am this guy and now I'm going to change to this guy. But as I, as you think about it, you're like, well, what's at the core of that? At the yeah. core of that is really, I want to be this guy, the dad, the husband, the, you know, uh, I want to be uh, involved in my faith, progressing in my faith. Those things are important, you know? And so it was, it, it was a hard for me to be able to take the glasses off and say, you know, we talk about masks, Mike, right? We take the mask off and say, what am I, what am I really, who am I really at the end, at mm-hmm. the end of it? So it made me think is uh, you know kind of again so many things or if we could look through the eyes of our kids or through children and my kids could care less yes they associated a logo <laughs> and some things and instantly oh look it's this shoe oh look it's that shirt oh look it's this can i get this um and and now that i'm not with that company i'm doing my own thing and different stuff like they could care less you know in fact you know the the, the kids are love when we go to Fred Meyer I mean for us Fred Meyer out here is like you know a super Walmart or a you know Target back in California or some other places but Fred Meyer is the big deal out here and she wants to be work at Fred Meyer and I'm like great you know like she doesn't (laughs) care she doesn't associate you know what job and whatever she's already thinking about what's going to make her happy and that's helping people and doing weird things so I I just think my kids for a, a minute yeah we're (laughs) <laughs> we're always talking about the, the the former company and of course we have that logo and things on a lot of our stuff and apparel and whatever and that you know it doesn't make me throw things away but it didn't take long for them to stop yeah almost like them stopping to connect that with dad too like um they didn't care they don't care like you said i could be doing any job in the world they just want to have a roof over their head and be fed and have some hugs and love and that's about it yeah so, well you know it Dave, in our in our conversations, actually in the document that we send out to first time guests, you're around, you're 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 
savvy veteran. Savvy veteran. Yeah. <laughs> right. Savvy vet. Right? <laughs> savvy vet. Uh, but uh, one of the questions is, you know, what truth are you holding in your life that you learned the hard way? And here we are talking to somebody and you're sharing some truths that you've learned. Yeah. And you've learned by getting, like Tyler would say, getting kicked in the shorts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was again the mid November, we're up mid June, so roughly seven months ago. Yeah, it's been a, a, you know, and I guess really the last five months, it's been a complete whirlwind and, and some real freeing moments. Um, being laid off has, has ended up being super freeing. It has really freed my mind and freed my thoughts and freed a lot of things that, that again, I thought I was secure. I thought life was grand and everything was okay. And, and looking back at it now, I realized that it was very stagnant. And um, what I late thought was security was actually, was actually some holding me back maybe a little bit. So it has been um, again, eye opening, scary, but also freeing of again, mind and body and soul. Like again, all, all those things that we'll probably all talk about and think about, but it's been, um, yeah, I even, I just even think back to who I think, who I felt I was towards the end of last year and even a few months ago. And I, I would like to say that the things I'm good at are getting amplified, whether that's individually as, as a, as a person or again, skills as a, as a profession and career that I just was letting maybe, you know, some things hold me back, you know, and, and I have some ownership, obviously, that didn't need to happen. I allowed it to happen. And maybe this again was a really great moment. But I think, I think it's interesting that you say ownership because those skills and those gifts that you had someone else owned. Yeah. Right. They were dictating to you how you were to use those. Yeah. And then we talk about these disruption events. Yeah. And, you know, now you're jumping onto an entirely, you know, Whitney Johnson's disrupt yourself. You're, you're jumping onto an entirely different and new learning curve. Yeah. You know, and it, and, and you're betting on, you're betting on your strengths, right? You're all in on what it is that you do, you do well. So looking back, if you were to be honest with yourself, pre layoff, were you aware of that stagnation? Maybe like in your quiet moments in yourself, you know, it felt like there were some things bubbling to the surface, yeah. right? Yeah. I'm, I think there was a little bit and, and, and I, I probably haven't processed some of thinking like what part was ownership, what part was just the working from home and the pandemic and being home and, and going, Oh, I can be on a conference call and emails. Oh, I can take the, you know, help the kids with school and do things. I, I think I just was a little bit of stagnant, a little bit of a routine that, that probably again, looking back, that routine was not working or it was holding me back as well. And not that I could change anything with pandemic and kids being home. Um, but speaking of kids, um, I have to edit. Hi. Probably bringing the puppy to say hi to me. Um, so I, I don't, I don't know if I had anything that triggered it. I just, I think what, what, yes, now being five or six months away from it, I could, again, it's that, that a feeling of it's that, that proverbial weight off my shoulders, like in a weird way, that job was, I feel like it was as being suppressed. And I don't mean literally like in, 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 again, speech or in actions or thought, but again, I, just feel now that I'm, I can do greater things and make greater good and have a greater impact. Um, even though I'd hire hundreds and my team would hire thousands of people for previous companies a year. And you would think that's impactful now doing my own thing. And I've employed a couple of people. I feel way more like I'm a way contributing to society way more I dig that. Than, I, than I was for 11 years to some degree. So I, I don't know. I think it's those moments. I'm probably still kind of going through that process is a great question and I appreciate asking that I don't have a, a marvelous answer because I, I think I'm probably still figuring some of that that out but well Dave if someone if someone asks today you know I mean I because I, I think the the thought that I'm as I'm listening to this I'm just thinking you know how do we how, how do we define ourselves you know how do we what is that 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 we tell people who we are and what do we tell ourselves you know I mean 
because it's hard not to, right? Because that's the world we live in where we say, well, I'm this title or I am, I do this thing. And yeah. I, you know, it's, it's interesting because even where I'm at in, in my career now, I, I'm, I'm conscious of that in meetings, you know, that I'm sitting in, I'm like, I don't, I'm not going to be defined this way. Like I, these are my core truths and this is what I want to be. This is what I want to be. These are the conversations I want to have. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, so, I, I mean, how I just, and Mike, you're maybe, you know, coming from you, I'm curious, what is that? How does, what does that definition process look like? Right. Because I think it's easy to fall into the role, right? Yep. Someone says, here's the script, Mike, <laughs> you are this guy, you're going to play the role of whatever. <laughs> And here you go. Let's move forward. Right. And we just own it. We just go, yeah, let's do it. I'll read these lines. This is it. I, so I how, do we, a, how do we I, shift that? I think that's a challenge, right? Because depending on where you are, this, when the boss gives you the script, now, if you're the boss, you can rewrite the script, right? But it's tough when someone, when a supervisor, when somebody, you know, like if there's a hierarchical structure to your organization and someone comes and says, read these lines. And you've got, you're right. You, you got to read those lines. I guess my thought is because that becomes the identifying piece of who we are, right? It permeates every aspect of your life at some point, right? You, you go to a party in the evening. What do people want to talk about? Your job. All right. Let me tell you, <laughs> yep. let me tell you what I do. Here's what I do. Right. And, and, and really, I loved your answer. Like, what's your title? I'm dad. That's yeah. my yeah. title. You know, well, but I you mean, think about it, like, so think about, think about it's a wonderful life, right? George Bailey and that, 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 that building and loans, but it's really George Bailey on the steps of a new house, giving out bread. Right. Yeah. And, and, and like Dave, you just kind of hit on something when we talk about impact, you know, like your numbers with that other organization were huge as far as jobs offered and people on board but you just talked about now doing your own thing and you're handing out a couple of jobs and you feel a different impact yeah and i think that regardless of the line right it's almost like that whatever thou art act well thy part regardless of this of the script like tyler was talking about there's there's a way to do it right that rings like dang okay that was impactful, right? If these are just widgets, we're done. Yeah. Right. But when we see that, that, that I'm coming from a place where this is what I believe about me, about you, about the work that we're doing. Right. And if we can elevate that, that's where impact comes from. I think if we're, if, if we're aware of what our core, who we are at our core we can influence how those, those the lines of that script are delivered, right? I mean, exactly. We we still may have to read the lines. We still may have to play the part. But if we're if 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 we're true to who we really are, and and that and that becomes something that we reference on a regular basis, then how those lines are delivered changes dramatically, right? Well, and to take that analogy even further, right? When the director calls cut. And you have a coworker pull you aside and say, Hey, I'm going through something. Can I talk to you? Mm -hmm. That's what it's about. Yeah. Right. 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 Like, Hey, I, 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 I watch you every day, deliver those lines. And I know there's more to you. I want what you, you know, I want what you have. Like, that's what, that's what this thing is about. Yeah. 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 Those are I just think when, when I hear Dave say freedom being laid off gave me freedom. Yeah. I think of Portia saying going to prison gave me freedom. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's like, well, well, hold on. My brain is like hearing two things, one negative, one positive. How in the world can being laid off? But 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 the we have constraints, guys. Like perceived, real, fake. Yeah. We walk into a room and we see four walls and we're like, oh, this is my box. Like, and no, I, it's not. Yeah. And I don't think that you necessarily right. We don't necessarily have to go to prison. <laughs> we, have to, we have to be laid off, to, but, but I Hold think on, let's I, back there. We, we are not saying go to prison to be. Yeah. Free. Yeah. This message is not brought to you by the, the state correctional facilities. All right. But, but, but I think that we, we can, 
we can hit that reset button on our own. I think mm-hmm. that, I don't know. I, I, I think that there's this, as I'm listening to you talk, Dave, I, I, I just feel like, yeah, I need to be connected to what is, what really makes me who I am and what really is important for me. Right. Because that, that's the, I want that to permeate everything that I do, not the flip side of that, which is what the title is, what the mm-hmm. job is. I don't need that to permeate everything I do. You know, in fact, when people talk to me about career, I'm always like, let's, let's get this over with. All right. I'll, <laughs> I'll chuck it out to you. And then we're going to shift on to something else. Right. Cause I don't, I mean, what's the point of that? You know, yeah. we're just comparing baseball cards. Because like your answer, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It, right? And I, I get, we, we've, we all have done that and do it and probably we'll still catch ourselves doing it even, even sure. after the epiphany from, from that I had recently about it all, because it's a natural way, like you said, to try to connect with someone. And again, I, one thing I've always emphasized myself or people I've worked with is, you know, assume positive intent. So even I'm, you know, <laughs> we're all po- with positive intent, asking people about their jobs and careers and who are you, what do you do? Because we want to be engaged and connect with that person. I guess, yeah, the challenge for me has been to, to try to strip, re- to try to remove that and go, there's deeper ways to engage with someone than, than the surface level of a job or a career. And yeah, so it's that who are you and what do you do? Right. Yeah. Like th- the context of that question, like that's really what we want to know is who are you and what do you do? But yeah. I don't care if it's CEO of whatever, like really, who are you and what do you do? You know, yeah. I mean, that's where we want to be. So Dave, I got, a, I, I have a question for you and I feel bad, man. Cause there was no pre-show doc for this. So like, this is just, throwing things out there right i like i got my rock star we're got lots of energy we're going (laughs) all right so here's the question you mentioned for the organization that you worked with they had they had an ethos they had a culture they had truths they had things on paper maybe they had things on the wall right when i walk into hq there's probably some things up on the wall reminding people that this is who they are and this is what they're about now that you're doing your thing What's your ethos? What's on your wall? What's on your paper? Do you have a, I mean, have you had some time to, to think about like that, that mission statement or the purpose of the work that you're, that that you're up to now? A little bit. So, so I, I haven't, and maybe because I, I launched my business pretty quickly that there were some core things I needed to foundationally have operationally to just try to make it successful and, and ideally successful as fast as you can. But in that process, I have thought about, yeah, the, the mine slash the company's ethos. I have not put them to paper, but I will say, you know, words and, and um, that would come, you know, the buzzwords for it would always have something about, um, again, honesty, integrity, again, stealing from the last company, but I hear it in other places too, is about doing the right thing. When sometimes there's not a policy, there's not a process, or again, in a new business, there's not a, 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 a roadmap quite yet for things, is I would hope between myself and people I bring on board, um, I would that feel if they need to make a decision and then there's not a something on paper about it, that they will do what's right for the customer, for the business, whatever it may be, um, that they that they make their decisions based on on helping people, not about a, not about profit. I guess you would say mm. um, profit's obviously necessary for <laughs> business and all of us. But so I do have some. Maybe a later day I can share because there's about four or five that have been brewing, and I've got them kind of on um, note paper um, to where I actually do want to paint them. I guess you would say on the wall of of our warehouse, um, so they're not baked yet. In, in business terms, but they're working through them. But I will tell you, they all have a, a layer of about respect, about trust, empowerment, um, and just, you know, doing the right thing, um, especially when no one, obviously we say no one's watching, but also when there's just not a, again, there's not a, a, a manual for it. There's not a, a make your decisions based on, um, again, what, what is the, what's best for all parties to some degree. So, Yes, I've got them, sorta. They they are in my head. I want to put them on the wall, you know, like I said, and paint them on the wall and let people see it and let me be reminded of them. Um, I'll share them shortly because I feel like I'll have it 
have it finalized really soon. Dave, Dave, I'm just telling you that excites me to no end. Like the idea of you in a warehouse and like, where do we want this thing to go? Right. Let's get some paint and let's put some empowering things up yeah. on the wall. I love that. And Tyler, what he just said, that pivot, right? I gotta yeah. go. I, I gotta. I gotta do this quick pivot. I gotta do some things. That's punk rock. It is. I love it. <laughs> right. I love it. Like yeah. I don't have. I don't have the answers, but we're gonna jump in. Like we're gonna figure it out. <laughs> I'm gonna be in business for myself, and we're gonna figure it out. Yeah. yeah. That's punk rock. That's punk rock. I like it. <laughs> and I, lo- I love it, Dave. So, so you've got you, you've got some new things you're, you've got a new, a new venture. You've, you're bringing on new people. Um, can, t- tell us, can you talk to us a little bit about what you're doing? Yeah. So um, going back to where I was starting to dabble with the side gig of, of selling on Amazon. Um, I was learning a lot and um, navigating a platform like Amazon, <clears throat> like any big company, when we talk about, maybe almost like being constricted by rules of people or a company or something, you know, Amazon, selling on Amazon or other platforms, they have rules and Amazon is really stringent rules. You can't just um, buy something and send it off and have ha- Amazon sell it. There's actually some process and procedures. And I was kind of like learning that as I went along and little did I realize that that's where my potential future and career would, would move into. Um, and so I did have did some kind of learnings along the way. And I mean, ultimately what I do is um, I don't so much sell on Amazon. What I realized is there's people who do what I'm doing, but there's a need for kind of a person to help people really scale their businesses on e-commerce platforms and specifically Amazon. Um, Again, this is not a paid endorsement for Amazon because I don't work for Amazon. They don't pay any (laughs) of my, they don't pay me at all. (laughs) I just help people that use that platform. And so there's people who don't have the time to navigate Amazon's restrictions and rules to be able to get products onto their website, basically, um, that there was a need for someone, the term is as a prep center, someone to follow the, the steps and stickerings and boxing, everything that is required for Amazon to do. Um, and came to realize that people really gravitate to like Oregon because it's a sales tax free state. So as I'm helping people build their e-commerce businesses, they like it because they can, they can direct ship their product to us and they don't pay sales tax. So they like it on a business model. It has helped me probably to really grow the business faster than expected um, with again, not knowing exactly what I was doing in some marketing or websites and, you know, ads and stuff. But at the end of the day, I mean, I guess I support sellers and brands um, put their product on Amazon or help meet Amazon's requirements so that that they can continue to scale their brand. So I guess there's even a little bit of business consulting indirectly with it. Um, hmm. But it's a lot of it's a lot of it's 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 it is kind of like a warehouse stockroom job. And I used to, you know, when I ran retail stores. I go right back to some of those roots that I did for 15 years before kind of transitioning to HR and town acquisition of where it was a lot of processes and a lot of like a, a, a stock room type of me- mentality and, and then get to add my business acumen onto it. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if but fully if people realize, but probably almost 60% of the stuff sold on Amazon was by people like you and I and little businesses. It's not Amazon's product selling like, is way more the majority of of just regular people who sell but there's rules and processes and regulations and fees and everything and and i've become i would like to say pretty quick expert by trial and error and by research of what that is and it's helped me scale so i mean i happy to go in deeper but at the end of the day i help people and brands i've got some small brands i work with you know navigate amazon's platform and hopefully scale and make their business more successful so you mentioned uh, when, when the bomb dropped, right? Yeah. And you, you kind of picked up the pieces. Where did, uh, you, you, you mentioned prayer and you mentioned, um, you mentioned faith. I, I was really touched the last time we got together where you were talking about when things went 
when things went south or when challenges and trials came in life, you found, you found comfort and strength in the basics. Yep. In fact, I think the, your episode title might be back to the basics. Yep. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what, what role did the basics play when you were going through what you just went through in November or sorry, when you went, when you went through it, uh, in January, it was in Jan- January. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think for me, I've, and, and I know I showed it in my previous episode, maybe even got a little emotional at the very beginning here with my voice, but I'm, I'm somebody who's not afraid, I guess, to, to own some emotion and to work through it and deal with it. Um, for me, that's basic for someone else. That might be a real big a challenge to kind of go through the emotional aspect of things, but I was allowed the space and the ability to talk about it or not talk about it with individuals um, and who I felt safe to talk about my feelings and emotions and, and I guess you would say the loss. And so I, I, for me, being able to, to be someone who's secure enough to go through their emotions <laughs> and share that with a friend, a spouse, uh, honestly, even some other, other people at my former organization or people who also were impacted months before who I was really still connected with. Um, and, and so I guess I, you know, find, I found some my safe place with people, but also a safe place with my own personal emotions to kind of work through it with also the understanding that I wasn't going to, it wasn't, I wasn't going to let it have me lay in bed day after day and week after week, that every day was still a new day and a new challenge, a new opportunity. Um, I found very often quotes that I would just see on Facebook or different Facebook groups or from people where before I'm like, oh, that's a great quote. I found things starting to now actually like sit and resonate and, and hit me harder and going, okay, yeah, you know, pick yourself back up and um, life will go on. There's people who've dealt with far worse. You've dealt with far worse. And I don't know, I just, I would gravitate to think about some talks and I reflected back on a book um, that I actually have behind me here in my little office that, that pulled out some quotes and thought about, um, I mean, the basics I've always, I would still stay, say, I've, I always still stuck true with. Um, I, I, I guess the biggest part of it for me was to allow myself the, the time to grieve because to me, that is what happened um, and be okay with that and okay to cry and okay to, to share. I mean, and to recognize sometimes where the feelings are coming from, because there was a Two days before I signed the lease on the warehouse, I can tell you exactly it was March 3rd. Um, I instantly was flooded with doubt and fear and and so many emotions. I did not have the two months leading up to that of, of thinking of launching my own business. Um, but what I appreciate is that I told my wife, I said, I want to tell you something. We're signing the lease tomorrow. I am flooded right now with doubts, insecurities, fears. I know where it's coming from, but I want to acknowledge I'm feeling this, but I, I know it's not, it's not a prompting to not do it. It's actually quite the opposite. Um, and obviously the next day signing the lease was then freeing. And so I, again, a basic to me was I was being pulled and prompted for, for two months of, I, I could have went into a, I guess you'd say the depths of despair. I could have not launched this business the day before I signed a lease because of just that the, the emotional adversity. And again, maybe that's how, you know, the adversary gets me is a little bit more emotional. He knows I, I have, that's, you know, I'm really tied to my emotions. <laughs> so he, he really, I think fed on those emotions and, and I am just thankful for, again, the, the foundation of the gospel, um, my family and, and everyone that, that did it. And it's, it's a, it was a really, I don't know if I've had a moment in life where I've stopped like I did on March 3rd and, and verbally acknowledged like to somebody in this case, my wife and said, I am being hit hard right now today with this, but I know, again, I know where it's coming from, but I, I just need to be open with again, how I'm feeling and, and the emotions coming through. Part of it was maybe to see how she was feeling. And maybe if she had similar feelings or, or validated, maybe, maybe I would reconsider where it was coming from, but she's like, I don't have those feelings. I'm hundred percent on board with this totally aligned with you. So um, again, I guess back to basics is understanding, you know, being able to listen to the promptings of, of 
the spirit and also hopefully being able to recognize what's what's godly and what's not i appreciate mm. i guess you would say one being in a position to be able to recognize that and, and you know being worthy to, and, and understanding of those things and had an experience in my past to understand the influences and power of both sides um that's probably the biggest biggest thing i would say if i kept anything because everything else was was kind of standard like i said i run a pretty <laughs> i guess core foundational life as i've shared um, that is one that, that definitely got amplified in the, in the couple months post that to launching my business was now the fear and doubt of being laid off. It had moved on. Now the fear and doubt was coming in about what I thought was the freeing moment. I was starting to be pulled back down again by a whole different, a whole different source in a whole different way. I feel like there's a whole conversation to be had about discernment. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. The what's, un- what's godly and what's not. Yeah. yeah that I whole, love that how do you parse out, you know, self doubt, you know, be, I don't know. That's, that's, that's interesting. I, I, I love that. that I'm, uh, I'm, <clears throat> I'm keeping a list of, of uh, there's a, there's a scripture in Doctrine and Covenants talks about the, the enemies organized. Yeah. And uh, he works in D's, right? You mentioned despair. You mentioned doubt, yeah. uh, discouragement, delay, right? I mean, I think that, um, distractions these days i mean i think Mm -hmm. that these things are real and dave you bring up a really good point they're personalized yeah right like the same way holy ghost talks to us and it'll talk to tyler in a way that it won't i mean it's going to be unique yep those challenges are going to come at us personalized and and it's it's awful to say but acknowledging them and i and i hear you saying you got through it by talking through your emotions like, okay, not everyone is good at that. Right? And I, I'm, I'm generally not either. I mean, I'm sure my wife would say she wishes I would share more and do more I, again at the, the moment. I don't know what, what was different about that moment. Maybe it's because I knew we wouldn't get to this next place without her and just another solid I, I found or a foundation to lean on. Yes. You can, you know, you can say, gospel and scriptures and prayer but i needed someone physical physically and again maybe not literally but still physically there to be able to to be even more present and and share with me and i'm the one who would hold that back not her um and and that she had so much trust and confidence in in launching a new business that she had zero exposure to i mean we basically had a board meeting for about three hours for me to explain what step by step of what it was, what we're going to do. And I was shocked after the three hours that she's like, sign us up. Let's do it. If there was ever a time in life, this is that moment. And so to have her be so positive and, and, you know, it it probably allowed me to realize I can share more than I probably realized. And I've been married to her for 11 years and realized I maybe have not shared and been as open and honest with feelings as, as I maybe could have all the time. So it has, it's, it's been, <clears throat> like I said, that's been really freeing and refreshing the last few months too, as in, I guess talking about work is different because it's a, it's a us thing now. It's not just a job sitting over on the side. It's, it's a us, <laughs> it's a family. Yeah. It's we're all doing this together. She's come and helped at the warehouse. The kids have come help, even though they're little, they, they put some, some work in. Um, so it, it's just, it's just, it's, it's, I think, elevated a bunch of things, even in a family and relationship status, too. Hmm. So, so Dave, right now, uh, you're all over the world, right? This is going to be dropping. Uh, Richest Men in Town is taking over the world. It is taking and over the world. <laughs> we have, we have uh, hundreds, if not thousands or millions of potential listeners. Every person's a potential listener. Yes. <laughs> yep. Dave, you might actually have people in bed. Yeah, you might actually have people that have recently gone through, or maybe not even recently. They've they've been dealt what you were dealt, and they're in bed. Yeah, what would you say to that person? Like, what's one action? What's one thing that they could do to kind of take ownership and get out of bed and do something? Because I think that's a natural reaction, honestly. Yeah, I think myself. Like you know, you mentioned you took that space of a month or so, and and I I think I probably would have spent some time in bed yeah covers over my head like what just happened 
Yeah, man. Wow. Uh, probably the million dollar question there. And I don't know if I have a million dollar answer because um, I know everybody is a little different. I would say my mentality in general has been, I, I felt, and I think I may have brought up in the last call, I felt through life I've been dealt numerous blows. I mean, lots of success, but numerous blows to where when something now happens, I'm just like, I don't, I've, I've dealt with worse and I got through it and, and, and everything. So for me, it's always been out channeling, like, is this really the worst thing that you've ever had happen to you? And, and a hundred percent of the time in my adult life, I've been able to say, this is not the worst thing that's happened. And, um, and, and again, a spiritual reflection of going, I'm playing right into somebody else's hand, the adversary's hand, um, of where he wants to do all, like you said, all the D's and, um, I'm, I'm internally motivated. And so it's, I guess for me, again, easy to go, um, you know, you just need to get up, you need to get on with your life and routine. And if you, if you aren't getting up and getting out and getting back to whatever normal is for that individual, I don't think the next opportunity is just going to, is going to hit you when you're laying in bed. It may, it may be when you just need to take a walk around the block to clear your head and you run into somebody, or again, a thought comes to you. So I think there's, Again, by being up and by being active, it allows our mind and our body and our soul to just be able to, to take in take in experiences and, and feelings and thoughts. Um, man, I, I can tell you, when I got divorced at 24, 25, I was in bed. So I, I, can, I can relate to actually a feeling that. And that's when I feel like was probably the lowest point potentially of my life was feeling unsuccessful in a marriage and divorce at 24 and 20, 24, 25 years old. And so that's where my, that's kind of my reflection point and go, that was my depths of despair. And you know what, that was 20 years ago. And I've had, a, again, children, you know, the Lily pulled from us and again, death that really related, you know, death experiences to, to people around me and, and tragedy. And at the end of the day, I, I guess I have something to reflect on and go, it got better and it will get better. I don't have a bit, again, some big motivational speech, but I think it's important to just, you just, you got to take that one. You got to get up. You got to get to some, some sense of normalcy. How, I mean, as simple as it is, it's like get up and ha- make breakfast and read or take a walk. Like I am not saying you have to start reading inspirational books right, <laughs> from one day or to go, the next. Yeah, or but go open a warehouse, right? But yeah. I, or I, open love a warehouse, idea, but, <laughs> I love the idea of getting up and like, what, what you said, right? The next thing isn't going to come visit you in bed. No, <laughs> it's not going to come fall on you. Go take steps, baby yep. steps, whatever it is. Right. I don't, I don't mean to go like, what about Bob? Right. But like go towards that next thing with some kind of movement, some kind of action. And, and I know you have, you know, I would, I think a, a lot of Christians or, or church going people that, that listen to or connect maybe with your guys's um, programming. So, I mean, I, I often still reflect upon that and just go, <clears throat> despite what I feel is my worst being again, that depths of despair at 24 years old and divorced and life is miserable. Um, again, nothing has, nothing beats the agony and pain that our savior has gone through. And he, again, I do often, I do reflect upon him and the atonement during some of those times and go, you know, he, he has gone through much worse and he can, he can feel my pain. Um, and, and I, I can, I can, I can carry on. So I don't want to diminish where anyone is. And yet at the same time, I go, <laughs> people are dealing with far worse. They may have been injured in war or lost legs or arms or, or cancer or so many things that, that. I haven't experienced. And so I I don't want to diminish where anyone is. And yet I think to me, yeah, the common thing is just pick yourself back up. I'm not saying again, you got to pick yourself up and you're going to be running a hundred miles an hour, but just take, take baby steps. You got to, you got to get up and you got to, got to get back to, again, for me, foundations and roots of who you are and what makes you sit happy. So I think I found that really quick. (laughs) Um, I, I, I want to be honest, like I, I dealt with all those things. So I don't want to say I didn't deal with it. I just was able to process it in real time, not in a sulking manner. And there were times I was going through a job search 
Um, and I got deep into with two jobs, one that would have taken us to Salt Lake, one to Boise, Idaho, totally fine with those moves. Didn't get them in final stages of both. And I, it brought back to depths of despair, like, oh, I didn't land these jobs and we were so excited. And, and again, I was associating myself with work and with the job and, and all those things. And it, it took me right back almost to a starting point of going, of feeling like not nobody wants me because that's how I felt after 11 years with the company. Like they don't want me. They surely could have found a way to put me somewhere in the company and of value somehow. And then have, you know, not get these couple jobs. That that's the moment I actually said, I'm kind of done with someone else dictating my quote unquote happiness. <laughs> and I, I, it's time to just be my own, do my own thing. That is Tyler Gouldism mm-hmm. right there. I love that. <laughs> that last line. I've heard, I've heard him say it. Has he? Okay. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. It's, it's interesting though, because I, I do, I agree with you, Dave. I mean, I think that when we go through the hard things, I, I think it's important that you, you, you acknowledge the the emotions and the feelings that you're having. It's okay. Right. To be, to, it's okay to get kicked in the shorts and to feel it, you know, and to, to be upset by it and to be, uh, you know, where, where it's, it's, it's almost derailing. It's okay. Right. But it's that idea of kind of getting up and brushing yourself off and, taking that deep breath and that first step. I mean, that's the hard thing. But I also think that if, if we have it to go back to this idea of identity, if our identity isn't, uh, or we can separate right from that employee employer, the relationship or that title, and we can say, okay, this is what I'm, what I'm all about. And I'm going to move forward with these things. Now that's not going to diminish the pain of going through yeah. interviews and, and not being selected at the end of it and, and having those feelings. But I think if we can push that or, or disconnect from that feeling for a second and say, okay, what am I, yeah. what am I really all about? I think it, it's something to move forward with. Um, yeah. yeah. I, cause but you know what, there's a lot of, I mean, look, we've either, we've been through it in some way, like you're describing, or there's someone that's going through the exact same thing, you know, yeah. that's thinking, man, right now, this not, it's not going to work out. And you know, when I was a kid, my mom used to say all the time, like, it's going to work out. It's and, and I hated that. I like, know. Right. Right. Like give me something concrete that we can actually talk about here. No, it's going to, it's all going to be fine. It's yeah. Right. And at the end of the day, if we're willing to put in the effort and, and pick ourselves up and, and dust ourselves off, it, it typically works out. Right. It does. Typically works out. <laughs> You know, as you, as you were talking though, Tyler, I was thinking of, uh, Hank Smith has a podcast with our uh, often quoted friend, uh, who we never met John, by the way. Right. Uh, oh, I, uh, and I have, he was in my board in Salt Lake at one time. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's we're friends. We know, yeah. we know John, by the way. Uh, separation, yeah, right? <laughs> so they have a, they have a podcast called follow him and, uh, they were breaking down the parable of the 10 virgins. And the idea being that, uh, that the five foolish, right? I mean, if you think about there's externally what we show and internally what we do. And when we talk about our identity, is our identity tied up in what we're showing other people? Yeah. Or is our identity showing up, is our identity tied to what we're doing when no one's watching, like, like Dave was saying, right? Like the roots are... Yeah, and I, I think back on conversations, Tyler, I had probably 10 years ago with you, right? What is the indicator that is the most pivotal indicator when you're looking at activity and faithfulness in the church? And it's what do they do with their discretionary time? Yeah. What do what do what do young people do when they're hanging out at home? Yeah. Right? When does scripture study happen? Does it happen when mom or dad says, Okay, let's study the scriptures, or are they found? cracking open the book of Mormon or reading from the Bible on their own time, you know, and, and Dave, you, you, you talk about those roots and when the, when the sun comes out and scorches, right. If you don't have those roots set deep, that's what happened. Layoffs come and we get derailed with life. Life is going to derail us. But as we do those things that are giving us that oil that we need, in our in in our independent time in our private worship and study we're going to have the strength to be okay 
Yeah, it's it's weird because there's this there's this um I mean there's work, right? You talk about what you do in your private time, the work yeah. that, that you're gonna put in. And and I and I think that is tight, you know, like we have to have a balance, right? Because there's this idea that, well, if I become the best at this one thing, then I am I have ultimate, I have total security, right? And, you know, I have no doubt that Dave was probably one of the best at that thing. Right. And then boom, it goes away. Mm -hmm. And so now it's like, if that's the only, if that's what you built your entire foundation on is I am this, and this is me and I am the best at this thing. And that thing goes away. Then what, right. Then where are you at? I mean, that's, that's a devastating blow. Yeah. You know, so I can see crawling into bed, pulling the covers up over your head and saying, well, you know, I spent 11 years becoming the best and now that's gone. I think that there's, you know, there's, there's a balance of work that has to be done. Right. So we, you know, we'd like to think that we could just be at the office all day. That was our time come home and turn on the baseball game. And that's our time. Now <laughs> the reality is there's a whole lot more work that has to go on behind the scenes to get you to a place where you have a foundation that when things are shook, you can go open a warehouse. You know what I mean? But it's a grieving process. Dave, you've mentioned that word grieving a couple of times. And I think we all know what that feels like. And I'm, I'm on record as saying there aren't, there are no rules for that. Right. I'm not saying you can't go to bed and put your covers over your head. It should be part of that process. Part of the process, right? but don't get mired in it. Yeah. right. (laughs) Right. Right. Eventually we've got to pick ourselves up. And I think that Dave, you point out that perspective is huge. Is this the hardest thing I've ever done? And honestly, sometimes that answer will be yes. Mm-hmm. But I love what you said because it's not the hardest thing that's ever been done in the history of man. Yep. Right. Because no matter what you're going through, and I'm saying this from really sunny quarters right now, right? Life is life is good in the Freeman home. So so take that for what it's worth. But no matter what people are going through, somebody knows because somebody's gone, somebody's gone through it before. And you can always, those promises are sure. Yeah. And I love, I love that you, that you mentioned that. And I mean, at the core, that's who we are, right? Right. It's just just who we are. Like eventually you're going to get stripped down to, oh yeah, I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ and I know what happened. And I'm going to be okay. Yeah. And like I said, I, I, I had experienced it. I've had the covers over my head. So yeah, like, I, I know we've all saying it, it is, yeah, we're all probably going to have a moment like that for sure. And for me, like I said, it was 20 years ago. And so I, I can constantly reflect on that because those feelings haven't gone away. Like they're, I, they can brew up it really quickly. Um, but I know even for me through some of this and through other challenges and processes is, um, is it's everything is so much bigger than me. And I guess for me, and again, I want to be careful of your, of the audience. Like I can not dismiss anyone's or diminish anyone's experiences for me. I felt in, in, even when I was single to now a family of five, I've always felt like I, I kind of can't be this moment. Like I can still go through the process, but there are, there are people or things, <laughs> animals, whatever. There are things that still rely on me. I'm, or I'm in some way part of their circle of happiness. And I need to figure out, I need to, you know, I, I can be in my depths of despair to some degree, but I have, I have kids that still want their dad. They don't, they don't, they don't, again, care who I work for or what I do. They want dad. I mean, I know may have seen it now i've had a couple of them poking their head in here on the zoom call like like those are those are fun little moments for me you know to they just want to be around dad and see what's going on and so i I, it was really easy for me to still go i'm a husband i'm a dad i'm still a provider even though we're figuring out at that time how to provide um and i've you know the pressure of that began to over and and the excitement of it but the pressure of doing it allowed me to actually you know, push away or to dismiss some of that despair. But again, for me, what I felt was pretty quickly to be in a fairly good spot, you know, four to six weeks after, after that, I mean, maybe someone's like, oh, you should have been fine two days later. 
but yeah, that's about my time it took to really process and grieve. Um, but again, just but Dave, I there were love, people who needed me. Yeah, I felt yeah, like still. people, the people who needed me, and I'm involved in the circ people's circle of happiness. Like, you, you know, like I love that I'm meeting with you for the second time. I love that we're bringing you back. But that makes me go back to like our early days, Tyler, of, uh, you know, the woods are lovely, dark and deep. Right. <laughs> and I, but I've got miles to go before Promises I sleep. Deep. Right. Yeah. Like, how cool would it be to just I'm going to hang out here and I'm just going to, you know, but I've got promises to keep. Yeah. And miles to go before I sleep. I mean, that's the responsibility calling. And it's not a fun call sometimes. Yeah. But in the end, if if anything else, let that get you out of bed. That yep. I don't care. I, single, married, somebody, somebody's happiness is tied to yours, and you kind of owe it to them to show up and to keep your promises. Yeah, agreed. Okay. So I can standing where you stand right now. Let's look back for a second. Do you remember the first day you were hired at that other organization? Yep. Probably in your mind, that doesn't feel like that long ago, right? It, it doesn't, even though it was 11 years ago. It doesn't, right. it feels pretty fresh still. Yeah. So, Dave, let me throw it forward because Tyler and I are always talking about remembering. And it sounds like remembering has gotten you through this rough patch. Mm -hmm. 11 years from now, your company is going to be somewhere. How will you fight stagnation in that reality? Because you'll probably, it, it won't be new anymore. You'll, you, that expertise that you're developing now, you will probably be a leader in. It will have grown. It will become routine. You may have warehouses, right? Yeah. We, you, we may be talking, to, I might be talking to Tyler Gould on this podcast 11 years from now, talking about David Voigtlander, the billionaire, trying to race to space, right? That's right. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> How will you fight stagnation? How, you, how will you identify stagnation? How will you fight constraints? That might be the $2 million question. Yeah. <laughs> how, will, how will you remember, Dave? Um, for, for me, it's a, it's, a, it's a kind of a two-part answer, two parts to it. One is I've all, I have realized through the situation to always be able to lean on somebody or people um, to, to, one, challenge me or course correct me or just to be there to be a sounding board um and number two is something i think i always have done in my career and something that people would probably always um say that i was fairly good at and and that is i've always over indexed no matter what my job was was on people and upon talent and upon like i said that that cliche word of empowerment and so i want to create an environment you know in my business and work that allows people to be creative, to do, um, to challenge the norm. And I think that has to show up by me being that to them of going, you know, allowing space to do that. Um, and so I, I would like, I would like to say, because I'm willing to listen and, uh, you know, the saying of, you know, I, I'm, I listen to learn. I don't, I don't always have to be the loudest room and the biggest talker. Um, that I, I want to listen, I want to hear, and I want to learn. And, and those things keep, will, I, I believe will keep, continue to keep ideas coming and to keep processes coming and to keep pushing my boundaries, again, whether that's work or, or spiritual. Um, so I, 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 I guess that's where I'm at. One is, again, having somebody to constantly challenge and I mean, maybe an accountability partner <laughs> and, and, for right for now, it would be my wife. And like I said, I, it, I hope it will always be her. Um, and, and then number two is just an environment to where I'm not saying to my previous employers, I didn't officially have it, have it, but again, in a large organization, I think you only have so much that you can impact or create. And I want to make sure no matter big or small, I am that I allow employees and people, the ability to speak and to create and to, challenge the norm. And again, a word I said, phrase I used earlier is just always assume positive intent. And so when they're challenging something is, is 
they were probably doing it to see how they can help the business or help me or help whatever. So um, I don't know if that comes from, again, a spirit of, of listening and being humble and, you know, I'm, we're above a title. So I might be CEO of a company and has lots of employees someday, but I, I, I don't want that title to hold people back from, again, pushing the boundaries and pushing the, the norm. Um, I hope to pay this forward. So I have an as well. So I think about, about that and not making me stagnant. I have somebody who's working for me, who's going to end up uh, down in Provo for, to go to school in a, a couple months. And he pretty much can run the business 90% of it. And to, to so much so that I said, I might be, I might open a warehouse in Orem for you to run. And that would be a great gig for you and a couple college buddies to do. And so I'm, I guess I'm already trying to think like, I, I, I'm not going to stick with what I'm at. I have plans, like you said, of growth and expansion and I have somebody who's really great and you know what, they can't be in Portland. So I might take part of the business with him to Orem and he can help expand it. Mm. So like I said, just maximizing people and their strengths and their abilities. And um, yeah, that's exciting. That's exciting. Yeah. (laughs) Can I, I, can I just ask, this might, this might be a side question, but what is it like (laughs) to have an employee? We talked about your, we talked about your family depending on you, but like you have people, you know, and we've worked, we've worked in organizations before where there's an owner and when you're not that owner, it's just different, right? Yeah. Like what's it like to be the owner and to have people's livelihood depend on you getting out of bed in the morning? Yeah. I, you know, I will say, you know, for the record, these are all, you know, either like a return missionary or just finished school. So I'm finding, you know, I, 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 and I actually like that because I am someone who ultimately really likes to teach and share. And I feel like that's a great moment in life when you're maybe 18, 19 or 21, 22, um, going through high school or missions or whatever. And you have so much ahead of you. I'm almost like things I, I, I wish I would have, gotten instead of going into a big corporate even you know so early in life is someone to to be a little more like gritty and just share and and help and talk about financials and talk about the business and when you did this action um it results in this for the company positively like hey this you know again do the right thing like i get a policy procedure with you know amazon or the companies we're working with is blank and this they don't have a policy for this but what is the right thing for our customer or what it is. So I, I enjoy like sharing and teaching those things. And so I find a lot of satisfaction in that. But so I will say most of my employees, they're not, they are saving up to go to college or saving up for a car. So I don't want to, again, diminish that they're not using it. I'm not, it's, I'm not. It's important to them right now, right? Yeah. And I, and again, it's, you know, here I am with another cliche, it's important to them. It's, it should be important to you. So yesterday talking with one of them, Zach, um, who, who is a return missionary from my ward, um, you know, we're, we're, he's talking about his car and, and what he, you know, getting new tires on his car. And I just think of all those things like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm helping hopefully to support getting the tires on his car may not be feeding a family for him or helping, but yeah, but at that, that moment. So it, yeah. it's, it's one of those, uh, you know, a weird dynamic because every, every time I'm issuing, you know, money or a paycheck, it, it goes like, oh, here's money from going away from the business. But then it's like, but the, the business doesn't grow without people. And so it's just like a necessary expense. And again, it's new territory for me. I've never had to, yeah, quote unquote, right. have a payroll. So <laughs> so some of it, I'm sure people are like, well, that's done. But I'm like, again, keep in mind, I've only been in this three months. So every time I'm issuing money and payroll, I think of the money leaving the business. But yet <laughs> we're successful and we're self-funded and we're making money after three months, which a lot of people can't say. So absolutely. I, I find great, I guess, joy in teaching and training these, these, these young men. And, and um, one of them, his sister works as well. Um, and, and I guess being a, a, a boss, aside from a paycheck that actually, you know, we, we talk about stuff, um, whether it's church comes up or girlfriends come up. And I appreciate me being, you know, 25, 28, eight years their senior that somehow, you know, they're allowing me to connect with them on that level um, as well. And just work work well. What a great great space to be in. Yeah. 
So Dave, good times. <laughs> good, good times, man. Life is, uh, I, I, I love our conversations because uh, I feel like every time you've got some, got some stuff to teach, man. And uh, you know, we could be, we should just be sitting in your warehouse. Uh, you know, I'm a little <laughs> jealous of Zach. He gets to be taught every uh, day by Dave <laughs> Whitelander, but uh, it's good stuff, man. Um, so I, I guess I, I, the, the, one of the questions that I've been thinking about as we're, as we're, as you're going through this and Mike, Mike alluded to this, but I mean, if, if you, if you're talking to, to someone who's finds themselves in a situation that's similar to yours, right. Where there's a transition point, it's a pivot point. What, what's your advice to them? I, 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 I think it goes back to some things I said earlier is, is hopefully you can reflect back and think about the voices, so to speak, in your head and in your heart and be able to really identify um, what is stopping you, what's holding you back. And often it is what we feel is a, a sense of security. And ag again, a paycheck has some security with it, but, it, but I also now reflecting back on it, realize that I was being held back <laughs> by some of what I thought was being secure. So I think, and, and not that, so I think to just, just, I have become more understanding and believing in we are, we are, we are as an individual, we are the ones who hold ourselves back way more than I guess you would say a person or a boss or somebody that we are often the ones who put the limits on what we're capable of doing. And I, and I know that is very physical, financial, spiritual. I, I think I've had a real awakening to that the last three or four months is, is we limit ourselves to what we think is good or, or even great or, and, and there's, there can be much more to us. Um, but, but we got to remove our own personal roadblocks. And again, it's not easy. It took me getting laid off and I don't want people to get laid off per se. And I would hope there's, I don't, and, and since I didn't experience it, I don't have the, an, an answer for it to do it like midstream in something. I had yeah. a moment that made me shift. Um, but, but again, it made me realize, um, I was the one holding myself back and, and, and I would hope that people can, even in, if they're doing a job they love, that they can figure out a way, even within that job or in their family aspect to, to just be able to, to not set a ceiling for themselves, to realize that there's so much more potential. You know, that could be in the repentance process and going there, you'll be a greater person when you, after you go through this and be beyond maybe you were after some, some hard situations or again, a layoff or being fired or whatever. So um, I guess that my, my, you know, I'm kind of going all over cause you caught, that's a good question. And I probably haven't thought about it a lot. And you're, I'm kind of talking my emotions and feelings out on it. it long windedly. I apologize. No, um, I but I think it's about the ceiling. Like I, again, what I felt was security. I realized security to me meant a, a paycheck coming every two weeks. Now I don't have a paycheck coming every two weeks per se. I mean, I could take money out of the business every day, I guess, theoretically, but I own, I own that now. And, um, I was limited in what I felt like I could achieve and do, um, by what I thought again was security. And, and again, to me, it was actually being complacent and stagnant. Um, I, I love that idea though, of, uh, you know, you said, well, well, you know, even if you're not, in, in that same situation where you're changing jobs or, or whatever it may be, just that idea of being able to remove roadblocks and, and maximize potential, right? Because it's easy to just kind of settle in and just play, play the part and just do check the boxes. But I like that idea that, that, you know, we, you know, would you say we, we put the limits on, on ourselves, right? Uh, most of the time. And so, and can uh, I, can I pick you, can I jump yeah. in there on, on a thought that he shared? Because, you know, Tyler, we've been talking about removing old debris. Yeah. And Dave, I love how you dropped in repentance there, you know, in that in identifying those barriers. And sometimes it's, it's things we're doing, right. That mm -hmm. are putting a, that are putting a limit on, on almost. And, and again, I'm going to separate this, right. We've been talking about jobs and we've been talking about, um, you know, financial things, but, but this, this applies to other, all aspects of our lives. Right. And I think of like John 10, 10, when Christ is like, I've come 
that they'll have, that they might have life and I'm going to paraphrase it, but, but they might have it more abundantly. And I think that's what you're getting at is like, Hey, we have, we, we put limits on ourselves by habits, by mindsets. And I think as we, as we remove some of that, that hubris as we remove some of that old debris and, and change our minds about who God is, change our minds about who are, who we are. And Tyler, I'm even going back to like Moroni 10 and like, you know, the conversation about the gifts of God, deny not the gifts of God. Right. right. I, I think that if we were talking to people that might be in that pivot place, it sounds like Dave, you did some inventory and it's like, well, what lights my fire? Right. You talked about yep. those early warehouse days, even in a retail company, even in HR, it was like, I, I dig the processing and I dig the, I dig that space. And I, that would be one thing if, if people are considering a, a, a pivot, like take an inventory on what your gifts are, right? Yeah. Take an inventory on the strengths that you do have. What lights you up? What, where, where do you go to feel alive? Because to me, Dave, I see, I see growth and I see this thing being alive. And I think that the idea is that that's what we want our life to look like, right? We don't want it shrinking and contracting. There's going to be ebbs and flows in life, but like we want it to be growing. And I think yep. sometimes we're like comfortable, we get comfortable and it's like, cool, I'll take the paycheck and I'll just stop growing right now. We'll just kind of cruise. Well, and, and there's nothing wrong with taking the paycheck, right? Nope. Yeah. But, but the, 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 I think what, what we want to be able to do is focus on how do we grow, right? How do we grow? Yep. Right. How, how do we grow? Because, uh, you know, I, I would love it if everybody would go out and open a warehouse. That would be, that would be exciting. It would, it would change the landscape quite a bit, but, <laughs> but I think that, 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 you know, to Mike's point, it's just that growth, like looking for opportunities to grow, whatever, whatever, whatever area of life that is, you know, it could be professionally, it could be spiritually, it could be with your family. It could be, I mean, you name it, right. But yep. we've got to be seeking those, those opportunities for growth. And I, I think just that's, love, that's I the just hard lo- part though, seeking them, right? Because yeah. the comfort is you settle in, you're, you're doing it right. Family's good. People are happy. I, you know, you, we have a routine. I come home, I do this. Kids do that. Mm-hmm. Boom. This is the life is good. M- maybe we need to come home and change it every time, you know, and say, how do we, how, what's going to be different today that I, so I can grow a little bit different. We can challenge each other. A little well, bit. And, that, and that's the challenge that Dave's alluding to, right? Like he was kind of forced into this new thing. And I don't know if in a million years, he would have dreamed that he's doing what he's doing right now. Yeah. I, I mean, you think I, my wife, once I brought it up, she's known, I've always had like an entrepreneurial spirit. And I would like to say most people probably have some level of that, but she has known from day one that I've always dabbled with opening, I, sharing ideas and putting them out in the universe and doing it. Um, and she is always like the security of things too, admittedly. Um, she in general is not a risk taker. And except if you know my, what people know my wife, like she's the rock climber, she's the rappeller, she's the <laughs> skydiver. But in life, like when it comes to house and paychecks and, and those type of things, she, she would more often strive to secure versus risk. And so again, that I had someone who was a willing partner at that time, um, and, and I, I can't think of, I can think of um, really again, the last three or four months really ringing true of about your circle and, and who you keep in your circle. I had no one who people may not have understood what I was going to do exactly. And even when I try to explain it to you guys, it still may sound completely like I have no clue what you, you're doing and, and that's okay. Uh, <laughs> but I had a circle of people that believed in it and believed in me, probably believed in me, obviously more than anything and trusted in it. And so to have um, reinforcements, and again, I think there's, you got to be careful. You don't want, we don't want the, the, the pleasers or the yes crowd per se, but I had people I trusted believe in it and, and, and want to support it. Um, even again, a friend, um, Patrick um, offered to come. He's called like multiple times in a week and said, do you need any help? He's like, I just want to be there. I'm not there to, you don't have to pay me. And I've taken him up on it. And that's been hard, <laughs> you know, in a spirit of just acknowledging you need help, yeah. but also him going, I want to help you. Uh, 
I've got two hours. Let's let me put me to work. You're, you're not paying. Don't pay me. You know, maybe I'm not supposed to say that here, but it was just a friend helping a friend, you know? And so again, like I would appreciate if someone is holding me accountable, but I also had a circle of a small circle of trust, I guess you would say that really believed. And I think it's important for us all to, to have, have that <laughs> circle of trust and people who believed in you. So um, that was really important and, and good to have um, along the, this journey too. Well, I love the lemonade you're making, man. <laughs> Life gave you some lemons and I love it. In the middle of a pandemic, a layoff had to be right? yeah. like just the, a difficult hand to play. And I love what you've done with, I love what you've done with the cards dealt. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Dave, you know, we're, we're, we're selfish. We like to have, we, we would have <laughs> you on like every week, man. It's, a, it's always fun. And I love catching up with you. It's good to see your face and uh, see that you're alive. It's good to see the kids there as well that's awesome She's trying to wave she's not doing it high <laughs> enough there she is <laughs> but uh you know what you've got the kids running around we know that it's a it's a it's a day for you to be able to spend with some family and we appreciate you carving out some time to be with us today but yeah. dave you know i i do want to ask the question because things shift right it's funny i mean here we are i don't know mike what episode are we on right now with 58 something. maybe 58 you hit your year marks recently i saw yeah, so that's we awesome. did, yeah we've been doing a year and and we talked to you at episode 29. Life was different yes. at episode 29. And so here we are a few episodes later, things have shifted a lot, but uh, Dave, what, what is it now going through what you've gone through? What does it mean to you to be the richest man in town? Yeah. Um, I can tell you, I'm not sure if my answer is going to be much different, but I will tell you, even if it doesn't sound a whole lot different, I actually have a stronger <laughs> belief and conviction of it, of, of dealing with what I've gone through the last handful of months. I mean, it, it still revolves around family. Um, but I also know I mentioned, and it's still true, but again, it just, it feels different now that I talked about, you know, I even, if I reflect back on it or to listen on, you know, in on what I said to this answer, I did talk about like life is more than just your job and your work. I, I it, it has a whole different meaning and impact for me now than it did seven months ago. So the words are probably no different. It's not a title. It's not the money um, that, that comes with a job or, or how people identify with us. It's again about relationships and it's about engagement. Um, I would add now that the richest life is also about how do you, how do you push through and break through your own barriers um, and really become the person you're supposed to become. Mm. Um, and I don't know if I could have said that six or seven months ago, or if I said it, it wouldn't have really been a true answer or a true heartfelt <laughs> thing. So I, I'm always going to come back. It's just made me be more grounded. Being being the richest man in town is is someone um, like who's right next to me, Bella, my kids, my family. Um, again, not not holding limits to ourselves um, and pushing the boundaries of we are as an individual in all things spiritual physical financial i definitely need the physical i need to add some add, add some of that into life but um yeah like, like sling I said, some I, boxes man just go to work and sling some heavy boxes oh, i, I do I, well i do and i actually threw my back out like two days ago and oh, geez. limping around like a 90 year old man and i'm just like sorry guys um so honestly, I don't feel like my answer is going to be terribly different. But like I said, it, I I have I have a much deeper conviction in what I said, especially about that part I just said. It is not about a job or a career or a title. I believed that seven months ago. Now I I don't even I, it's not even just believe it. I, I would say I I actually live that and amplified it since then. Um, and, and again, even a deeper feeling and understanding of of your circle. Um, just being positive, removing roadblocks and restrictions um, or jumping over the hurdle, whatever it may be. Um, and, and just again, I think what I've learned is something we've talked about is my identity is different from seven months ago. My, well, how I identify, but potentially how others I hope identify <laughs> too is, is me as a man and as a husband and as a father and not, not a former, you know, corporate employee, you know, from, from X brand or whatever it may be. So 
Um, yeah, sorry, I know I'm going all over the place a little with it. Main, my main point is saying it, it not, not a lot has changed, except I have a deeper conviction to what I said before. Um, Here's what I love about that answer, Dave, is that we, you know, if, if I went back through all of our episodes of The Richest Men in Town with all of our guests and we, we dissect the, the, the final question, right, the answer that's given to the final question, to me, Mike, we, we're looking at the, the core values of each of those guests when they talk about that final, you know, what their, their answer is to that final question. And what I love about your answer today, Dave, is that the, the core of that answer hasn't changed, but through the experiences that you've had over the last seven months, they've been solidified, yeah. right? I mean, you are who you are and you're on here with us because we love who you are. And the fact that you've gone through some tough things has solidified who you are. And, uh, I, I just, uh, I think that you're, you're, you're riding the wave, man. And I, but as I, as I hear you, Dave, I picture a blacksmith pulling that metal, that iron right out and it's glowing and taking that hammer and bang, bang, bang. And I feel like I, your life has been banged on. Yeah. And you could have easily like picture that you could have made a choice and we could circle back with you and you could be bitter. Mm-hmm. You could be in a different corporate agency doing similar work and just mad yeah. and miserable. Right. And I, I love where you're at. I see open. I just see open. Right. I mean, I would encourage you to take a piece of paper out and just, if you haven't already, right. Where is that thing? Where is this thing 11 years from now? Yeah, oh, I, I've got it. I've got it six yeah. months from now, but even, but yeah. <laughs> no, and but Zach I mean, has made so, me. It's so great to just be able to see that you have op- options available to you versus somebody saying, no, sorry, uh, your time up here, your time is up here. And, you know, like I'm sure, I'm sure the Voigtlanders were on their knees praying for that job in Boise or praying for that job in Salt yeah. Lake. And, and I still believe that some of, some of our greatest gifts are those unanswered prayers right we're asking for things and heavenly father's like you don't know (laughs) you don't know (laughs) what i have in store for you limit reduce take these ceilings down take these constraints down you're your worst you're you're your worst enemy right and i love that you've i love that you've learned that and i love that you've come on to share it with people listening so i hope i hope we're i hope we're all listening i hope myself included we'll be able to apply some of the things you shared with us. Thank we you. Pre- we appreciate it, Dave. It's been fun. It's always fun. It's always fun. It's always fun, man. <laughs> hey, and the house is just waking up, so go have a great Saturday, huh? Oh, you don't understand. Like, yeah, I mean, these kids, um, I do not have kids who sleep in. We'll just put it that way. And Oh, we got a guest speaker. Guest speaker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, um, it, uh, it's not uncommon that the kids are up. 5 30 to 6 range every day so probably stages, stages of life dave my house is is in full slumber right now <laughs> like a few years ago that wasn't happening man. <laughs> oh god well, hey, dave go be dad i will yeah thanks dave thank you see ya see ya good idea ernie a toast <laughs> to my big brother george the richest man in town. <laughs>